So this is a first with our Tesla Model Y and it is lit. I'm a long ways from sunny Southern California. I'm here in South Lake Tahoe doing a video for you guys because I just wanted to share with you my thoughts on what it's like driving a Tesla or an electric car in cold weather. I mean, right now it's only like 35 degrees. However, the car has been outside in 20 degree weather. It's actively snowing. As you can see, there's snow all around me. It is beautiful. So one thing if you guys didn't know with electric cars, batteries is that it's affected by extreme temperatures like extreme heat or extreme cold. However, most of the time with these type of battery stuff, it's usually the extreme cold that gets to a lot of batteries. And one thing that usually affects EVs or electric vehicles is cold weather. Let's just say your car says you have 200 miles of driving, but if it's super cold out, it can actually reduce that range in half, which is crazy. It also might take forever to charge the car and you might even not be able to even get in the car because the door handles are frozen shut. And that's kind of the crazy thing about Teslas. I mean, it's so bad that one country, South Korea, is actually suing Tesla because they claim that they lied about the estimated range in cold weather temperatures. Now for us, we live in sunny Southern California, so cold weather isn't a big deal. But for most people everywhere around the world, snow and extreme temperatures matters. Now, we've done road trips in the past where we go to Mammoth Lakes when it's really cold out and it definitely does affect the range. However, this is a whole new ball game. We're currently at our cabin in Lake Tahoe. Now, I'll do a separate road trip video so you guys can get the full experience. However, today is about how to drive your electric car or your Tesla in the snow and cold weather. First, let's talk about the weather. I noticed that around the low 40s and 30s is when I noticed the most battery degradation. As in the range estimated is reduced due to the cold. This also means that charging takes longer and the colder it gets, the worse it gets. However, the Tesla is really good at letting you know that your charge will be reduced the colder it gets. It also factors weather, wind temperatures, and driving into the trip tab, so it's super accurate now to give you a more estimated range reading. The Tesla does a great job of heating up the battery using the motors, and it's called preconditioning. It does it when the battery's too cold or when you're about to go to a supercharger and the battery isn't heated up yet, so that when you do charge, it reaches optimal temperatures, and it also increases the charging speed, which is awesome. Pretty much, if you see a snowflake icon on your Tesla screen, be ready. Now here at the Everyday Chris channel, my goal is to make your everyday lives easier. And let me tell you, charging your Tesla in cold weather and it taking over 15 hours definitely is not gonna make your life easier. Now, just a quick point to that article I'm referencing. The older Tesla Model S and Xs were never able to handle the max charge rate of 250 kilowatts due to the battery chemistry. A lot has changed since then, so the newer refreshed Model S and X as well as the three and Ys all support fast charging speeds up to 250 kilowatts, which means much quicker charging speeds in cold weather. I mean, honestly, it's just the way the technology was back then. The only electric cars back then were Teslas and like the RAV4. I mean, even if you charge the older Tesla Model S and Xs at a supercharger at optimal temperatures, it takes like twice as long than charging a Model 3 or Model Y. And it's just due to the battery chemistry that they had back then. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses or anything. It's just kind of the way the technology was back then and it's not Tesla's fault. Anyways, moving on. Tesla does a great job of helping you keep that optimal temperature for your Tesla batteries, but you just kind of have to do a little bit of homework and put a little bit of effort in. One important motto is a plugged in Tesla is a happy Tesla. If you live in cold environments, do your best to keep your Tesla plugged in because it will use that energy and not your battery to heat up the car. Also make sure you use the scheduled charge option. There's options to precondition the car and the battery so it heats up to an optimal level. It also heats up the cabin, so when you are driving, you're nice and toasty and you don't need to blast the heater, which will reduce your range. If it's also cold in your car, try using the seat heaters and the steering wheel heater to help increase your range. I know it's super annoying, but that's just kind of the state that we're in right now with technology. So, I mean, it's like a routine. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. Also, depending on how cold it is, make sure you give your Tesla enough time to warm up 
between 30 minutes to sometimes even an hour if it's super icy and super cold. One huge thing that everyone hates is the ice buildup on the Tesla that prevents your charge port from opening. And the craziest part, because the door handles aren't really handles, if there's ice buildup, you won't be able to open your door. But Tesla has so many ways to help you out, but again, you have to plan it out a little bit. First off, you can easily check the temperature inside of your Tesla by using the app. From there, there's a simple command, max defrost mode, you just gotta turn that puppy on. Also, if your door handles are iced over, Tesla added a new feature called the door unlatch mode, which literally unlatches the door making it so you can get into your car easier. And of course, if you ever need to charge your Tesla anywhere, just put the destination to the nearest supercharger so the battery can start heating up. And the quicker you do this, the quicker your car will charge. Tesla really tries to dumb it down for everybody for the best experience. Now with the new Model Ys, they have this super cool windshield wiper defrost mode, but mine doesn't have it. So make sure when you are parked outside and it is gonna snow and be icy, put your wiper blades in wiper service mode so it doesn't stick to the bottom of your car and it makes it much easier. Also, there may be a chance that your mirrors may freeze as well. So make sure you disable auto fold mirrors. So now we got the easy part out of the way. Let's talk about the driving settings you need to change now if you ever wanna drive in the snow or the ice. First, yeeting is not an option, so make sure you go to pedals and steering and set the acceleration to chill as it makes it easier to drive so you're not slipping and sliding in the snow. Also, a good idea is to set your steering mode to comfort so that you have better control and better handling with micro adjustments if your car ever does lose control. And if the snow is really bad, you can easily enable off-road assist. An off-road assist helps you have more control in the snow as it shifts the power to both the front and the rear wheels evenly. So I do recommend turning it on. Just be mindful that it only works the best at low speeds and it does turn off autopilot as well as your parking sensors. Slip start is great to use if it's stuck in snow. One thing that helps us as drivers while driving in the snow is that Tesla limits regenerative braking if it's too cold. It's partly because the battery can take in that energy but it's also because it helps prevent the motors from slowing down the car excessively, which can cause us to lose control. However, if it's still snowing and icy and the temperature is warm enough, it's not gonna enable that feature. So you wanna make sure your stopping mode is not on hold, but on creep or roll. I like creep because creep means when you let your foot off of the brake, the car slowly moves up. It's also helpful to make sure your tire pressure is at the recommended or slightly higher. Because the weather is so cold, your tire pressure will automatically decrease. So it's a good idea to always have your tire inflator in your car just in case. Overall though, of course, if you live in snow, get snow tires as it's a night and day difference. But I have to say with our mission and pilot support all season fours, it's doing a decent job. Overall, we've been in Tahoe for a few days now and I have to say it's not that bad. As long as I calculate all my charging stops and have plenty of juice in my car, I'll be fine. It's the one time I'll keep my car charged to 90% and above, just in case I get stuck in snow and I'm stranded. Anyways guys, hope that video helped you and see you next time.